Good evening, and welcome back. I'm Edie Lewis, and this is my Dracula Reviews. Sorry for the theatrics. I just had to, especially since this week, or week, video, whatever you want to say, is another Dracula Review! And a Nocturnal Review. I'm actually pre-recording this episode, which I never pre-record quite like this. This is a few days ahead. It's either going to go up on Friday or Saturday. I feel like some of the other booktubers who say that. So this is a partial booktube as well as a uh, video booktube. And you know what? I have to put on my glasses because I'm going to want it to want them on for this video for certain reasons. There's a lot to cover for this, and I'm not going to cover everything. So I do invite you to do some research if you want to know more information. So, um, and there's tons out there. So... And I did wear this cape for a reason. And this medallion, this is not the medallion I wanted. Um, I have another medallion. I can't find it. So I had to use this one. Anyway. So the reason why I'm dressed like this is it's very Bela Lugosi-like. At least that's what I'm going for. I don't have a tuxedo. Um, this video is, if you've seen the title, which surely you have. If you haven't, that's perfectly fine. It is... Universal's Draculas. And yes, I said Draculas. Um, so this video is essentially about the Universal Studios Dracula films. And you are going to see how much I paid for one of these years ago now. I don't know how many years now. But the Bela Lugosi film. Uh, Universal Studios did make two films at the time of this film. I will briefly mention it now. There's a Spanish version of Dracula. It's actually on this DVD. I'm not going to talk about that one very much, except for right now. Um, it was filmed simultaneously. They used the same sets. A uh, different cast, a Spanish-speaking cast. Um, it's not a bad film. Uh, I'm just not crazy about it because... It's a little over the top. It's longer, and it is considered to be superior due to a, a technical point, of, you know, on a technical side, which, yes, it is, that's for sure. And I love the title card at the beginning with the candles and the spider webs. It's very atmospheric. Not that I don't love the opening for the Bela Lugosi film, but I do really like that opening for the Spanish-speaking one. Uh... I think their acting is a little over the top for me personally, but that's no slight on them. They did a great job with it. It's just I prefer the Bela Lugosi one, so there's no hate here on that. And um, if you haven't checked that one out, do check that one out. And the other film, and yes, you can see that I paid $7.99 for it, is the Frank Langella film from 1979. So... And I will briefly mention the play that both these movies are based on. So, after the success of Phantom of the Opera, as well as 19, I think, 23's uh, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, starring Lon Chaney, which I have not seen yet, Universal Studios greenlit Dracula, and it was to be one of their first supernatural um, talkie dramas. Originally, they wanted to make uh, a film, you know, primarily off the book, since the book, you know, has so many location changes and it's kind of lengthy and stuff, it was just not possible to do. So they decided to rely mostly upon the play, which I did read specifically for this video. And also I've had this script for a few years Had started reading it, didn't get to finish it. So I read it as well as watching a play here on YouTube. Uh, a, a, a performance of the play while I read it. And it is the dramatized play Dracula, the vampire play, in three acts, dramatized by Hamilton Dean, who was the original one to dramatize it for England. For, uh, for England. Sorry. And then it was Americanized by John L. Balderston. It's not a bad play. So here's the book review part. It's not a bad play. It's rather fun. It's turned the whole... Th it's condensed the story down switch two of the characters around, cut a lot out, and it's brought it down to basically a drawing room drama. This is, okay, if you've ever seen, and if you've seen the Franklin Langella film, which I'm going to talk about soon, if you've seen that film or any other film where they've switched the characters of Lucy and Mina, it's due to this play. 
Some people would say that this play is a little cheesy. Yes, it is a little cheesy, but um, it's also quite serious. I mean, the, the, the production I watched while I read it, they kind of went off the script a little bit. I wish they hadn't done that, but that's just my opinion. All in all, it's a good play. I would actually love to either be in this play. I'm not so sure anymore. I'm not so much into being on the stage anymore. I was for a while, and... I'm glad that I'm no longer on the stage. Uh, it's just, um, for me, it's a nerve wracking process and there's other factors involved. So, but at one time even actually wanted to direct this play. I wouldn't mind doing that. I've directed one show before and if I ever direct it again, I think I'd want it to be this. So, but all in all, it's a good show and it was popular in its day. It was popular in England, and then it came to America and was on Broadway. It was very popular on Broadway, and here on Broadway is where we got Bela Lugosi, a Hungarian immigrant who had started on the stage. And that's actually how he learned English, was he learned his lines phonetically, and so he learned English through uh, being in shows. He was not the first choice for 1931's Dracula by Universal Studios, Originally, it was Lon Chaney Jun uh, sorry, Lon Chaney Sr., who played the Phantom of the Opera and the Hunchback of Notre Dame. They wanted him, but unfortunately, he recently had passed away of cancer. I think it was throat cancer. And so they picked up Bela Lugosi from the Broadway show, as well as um, Edward Von Sloan, which I have seen a little bit of his um, test footage for his screen test, uh, Edward Van Sloan, I mean. And um, I think they used a spot right out of the play because it has to do with the whole thing with the mirror and something being tossed at the mirror on the wall. So they used a scene directly out of the play. Now, with this film, they do switch the characters of Lucy and Mina back. So Lucy is played respectfully by, you know, as the Lucy character and Mina vice versa. Um... They do use some of the novel, but they change things. We actually have the connection of Renfield, which is never explained in Dracula. Uh, his connection with the vampire is presented in this film. It's not Jonathan Harker goes to Transylvania on Walpurgis Night, which is different from the novel where it was St. George's Night. It was Walpurgis Night that Jonathan Harker was in Munich in Dracula's Guest. So... Um, he goes to Transylvania to, you know, sign the paperwork of the purchase of Carfax Abbey. He is almost attacked by the three brides, but ultimately attacked by Dracula, driving him insane. And they travel aboard a ship to England. Renfield is the lone survivor and is committed to a mental asylum where he's, you know, he's a raving lunatic and he, uh, eats spiders and flies. He has an obsession with it. And... The character of Renfield is played superbly by Dwight Fry, who is an awesome actor and appeared in actually several of these early Universal Studios films, including Frankenstein the same year, which the success of this film was due to what was the reason, sorry, is what I'm trying to say for why Frankenstein was produced. The film then transfers entirely to London and to Whitby. Dracula is presented as the suave character, kind of like in the play, where he's, you know, he has the hypnotic power, he dresses, you know, suavely, he's, he's the sexy foreigner, is quite precisely what he is, and he's very suave and sophisticated, very different from the Dracula in the novel. Um, so that's kind of a rundown, and some of the characters' names are shortened down, like Jonathan Harker's now John Harker. We don't really know what he does for a living. And he wasn't the one who traveled to Transylvania, but he is engaged to Mina uh, Seward because Mina is now Dr. Seward's daughter. And the characters, the characters of Arthur Holmwood and Quincy P. Morris have been torn from it and they're no longer in it. Dr. Seward's an older man. He's, of course, you know, Mina's father, as I said. And um, Lucy is her friend and she's stay actually staying with her. And her name is now Lucy Weston. So, 
great film. I do recommend you check it out if you've never seen it, or I, I, I'd be really surprised if you've never seen it or you've never seen clips of it. On the DVD, and I'm sure Blu-ray editions, I don't know about the Blu-ray, you can watch the film as it was originally presented with, you know, the only music in it is at the opening, which is Swan Lake. And the uh, music you hear in the background at the theater where Dracula meets the Sewards, Jonathan Harker, and Lucy. Um, you can also, and this is how I saw it originally, you can also uh, select the Philip Glass score, which is awesome. And actually, the production I watched of the play did use this music as they were coming into each act. So they used the Philip Glass score, and it was, it's awesome. In some ways, the scenes go wonderfully with silence. The silence really helps with the atmosphere and the effect of the film, but the music does too. It emphasizes it even. But anyway. Universal Studios decided years later, how many would that be? Almost 40 years. So it was like, well, no, not 40. I'm sorry. Almost 50. Sorry. It was almost 50 years later. It was 1979. I was uh, adding wrong. So, my bad. So it was almost 50 years later that Universal Studios decided to remake the play since it had been playing on Broadway again in a revival and it was very popular. They tried to make it, uh, I guess some people would consider it less hokey, and they had a very uh, sexy Dracula in a different way. Frank Langella played Dracula on the Broadway show, just like Bela Lugosi had. So they made the film... And, of course, they used the star of the play. They wanted to rely more off of the novel than they did off the play itself. And, but in some ways, I would almost say that they used more of the play. Because as the movie's playing, there were several times where they used lines that were directly out of the play. I mean, in the Bela Lugosi film, there are moments where... You see, you hear, hear some of the lines right out of play, and they're like delivered verbatim, or sometimes they're just you know they're slightly off, or they've just rewritten the lines. In this case, um, some of the lines are directly out of the play, so word for word. And Dracula is presented here as a love story. Now, this is not the first time that Dracula is you know presented as a romantic character, because we also see him. In an earlier film from the early 70s, which was on TV here and it was in theaters in Europe, I will actually talk about it in another video, um, starring Jack Palance, where they wove a love story into it. It's just not the same love story. But this one makes it a full-blown love story, and they wanted to focus it more on that. Like, Franklin Langella doesn't appear with, you know, effects in his eyes. He doesn't have contact lenses. He doesn't have fangs that we see. The female vampires do in this film, but not the other. So, um, Also, the architecture they use, and I forget the artist that they uh, based it on for Carfax Abbey in this film, is beautiful and grotesque at the same time, and it's very over-the-top. And in some ways, it makes me think very much of kind of German Expressionism with the use of shadow and exaggeration. It makes it like a dream. So. But, um, anyway. So, this film, it does stick it a little bit more to the whole... Um, drawing room drama in a way. The action is set almost entirely in England except for at the very tail end. I think they're actually in a different country or the port of a different country, I think. And um, so like the, the main settings is like the Seward Asylum, the Seward Home, Carfax, and outside and then the cemetery. Dracula actually arrives on the Demeter in the Bela Lugosi film. It's not called the Demeter. They changed the name. I don't remember what they called it. 
Uh, he arrives on the Demeter. He's the only surviving uh, person on board. He's actually found by Mina. This one actually switches, just like in the play, the Mina and Lucy rolls around. So now Lucy is the daughter of Dr. Seward being played by Donald Pleasance. And Mina is her friend. Except for she's not uh, Mina Weston or Westenra. She's Mina Van Helsing. She's Dr. Van Helsing's daughter. And she's not in the best of health. So she's the one that finds him and helps him basically to Carfax or whatnot. I don't know. I assume that's where. They don't really explain that from what I remember. I recently rewatched this, by the way, and was kind of surprised that I had kind of... I liked it the first time I saw it, and then I just kind of shoved it to the side, and then rewatching it recently, I'm like, this movie is so good. So. Um, Dracula introduces himself. He actually uh, joins them at dinner, and he kind of shows off his uh, hypnosis abilities and he kind of works the room a little bit, charms the ladies, impresses the men, makes Jonathan Harker uh, jealous. This film is set more in the Edwardian era, so it's closer to the novel, but also gives a nod to the play because in the play they do mention a vehicle, car, whereas the 1931 film takes place in like the time period it was made. And we actually see Jonathan Harker driving a really early car. So, but um, they relied it more as a, this as a supernatural love story and less of a horror. So it is a gothic romance is what this has been turned into. And it's, it's excellent. So highly recommend it. There's also this one scene that almost reminds you of like a James Bond opening sequence. Um, and it's where, uh, Dracula comes to Lucy and, um, puts the bite on her. We'll just say that. And then it kind of goes into, um, almost looks like, you know, like a James Bond film with the red and it's kind of psychedelic in a way. And there's a bat and their, their silhouettes are kind of hanging in the middle of this red and it's really cool. So. The bad thing is about this DVD is that they changed the color, which on the back cover, you can see the pictures. I don't think I could show them very, if I showed them, I don't think you'd, they'd show it very well. Where the color is, you know, it's done in like darkness and then like vibrant, warm, orangey light. The film, it's like they drain the color out of it because you could literally, and I did try this, you can turn the color off on your TV and the parts of the film look almost exactly the same. I think they had originally wanted to, or someone did want to film in black and white, but they, Universal said no. And this is a Universal Studios uh, production, but it's an American slash British uh, film. They filmed it on location in England, I think in Cornwall. I'm thinking, I'm not sure, but... Anyway, there's tons of information. There's a documentary on here that's called Revamp, The Revamping of Dracula, and it's the making of. You get awesome interviews from uh, Frank Langella on it. Oh, and I did forget to say Van Helsing is being played by Laurence Olivier, and he gives a fantastic performance. So, But those are the two films, and uh, the you know this film is considered a classic. This film does get a little bit of flack because it was directed by the man who directed um, Saturday Night Fever, Badham, John Badham, Badham, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. Uh, so they kind of consider almost the disco Dracula, and it was the same year that there was a uh, film starring George Hamilton that was a parody on Dracula called Love at First Bite. It came out about the same time, so that kind of harkened it a little bit. And also, there was a straightforward horror film remake of um, Nosferatu, which I forgot to mention that on my Nosferatu video, So, which if you haven't seen that, check that one out. But that is it, except for one little treat, and I didn't have time to memorize this, or I would have, but this is a quote from the play at the very tail end, and this is how we will close tonight's video. This is Dr. Van Helsing at the very end of the play, right after the curtain call. Just a moment. Sorry, I messed up already. Just a moment, ladies and gentlemen. Just a word before you go. 
We hope the memories of Dracula and Renfield won't give you bad dreams, so just a word of reassurance. When you get home tonight, and the lights have been turned out, and you are afraid to look behind the curtains, and you dread to see a face appear at the window, why, just pull yourself together and remember that after all, there are such things. I'll see you next time for another Dracula review coming soon. Bye-bye.